Hi, everybody. It's Julie Huck with the Agent of Change platform. And today I have Ed Huck back with me. It's so exciting. I've, I've had you uh, interviewing you a few different times lately. And today I asked him to join me so that we can talk about this lawsuit that's going on. And I know that it is a hot topic over the last few days, especially. The news media has blown it up. Uh, we are getting messages left and right from all sources. We're getting messages from the news media. We're getting phone calls from our family asking if we're going to be okay. Will we have a job? What are we going to do? Um, we are getting messages from brokerages uh, trying to recruit us. We, I mean, things are just coming from left and right. So we wanted to just share our knowledge and I wanted to ask Ed because um, he's been talking a lot to our team and uh, discussing some really important facts about the real estate industry and the history of our industry and um, has really helped us and our team to realize that there's really nothing to be afraid of. And so that's what I wanted you to share with us today, Ed, if if you're so willing, is just to kind of share some of those things that I've heard you say in the last couple of days with, with everybody here, because it will give you such a such a new perspective, and I hope it helps you. So so tell me, Ed, what is what is this history of the real estate industry, and, and what does that mean to us today as an agent as we're looking at these changes coming into play? Well, thank you for asking, Julie. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it's if you remember your real estate history, and I think for any of us that have taken our real estate exam, they do go back into the, you know, they teach us about the history of realtors. And um, people started using realtors in the late 1800s mm -hmm. and early, into the early 1900s. The National Association of Realtors was actually formed in 1908. Wow. Which, if you think about that, that's uh, 100, over 100 and 30 years ago, 140 years ago. That's crazy to think about that there's been realtors around for that time period. Matter of fact, wow. in the state of Ohio, I think it was 1920s, they made it mandatory for a realtor to have to pass a test to become a licensee to, to legally sell real estate in the state of Ohio. Yeah. So for over two, for over 100 years, there's been licensed realtors in the state of Ohio. Um, and um, I think we would all agree a lot has changed in the last hundred years and we're all still around, right? So there's the, the, the general public has been using realtors for a long time and there's been a lot of changes economically, socially, um, uh, technology wise, you know, a lot of things have happened in the last hundred years, yeah. you know, including when you think about it, the, the original MLS was just, just a bunch of realtors getting together once or twice a week in a room telling everybody about their new listings that they got, right? Uh, then at that current turned into listing cards that these offices would receive, you know, once or twice a week, they would get these cards in the mail that it said, okay, here's the new listings for the week. And the, the listings would be kept in a box on, uh, you know, in, in the office somewhere. Um, so that MLS is actually literally uh, in a box with five by seven cards on it. Uh, of course, then that, Turn into MLS books, and now everything's online. Anyway, so you know, I think when you look back, you know, when consumers needed to get these houses sold, they would hire a broker, and that broker would actually, you know, assign an agent to help that seller sell the house. And inevitably, what was happening is realtors realized that, hey, why don't I enlist the help of all my other realtor friends and colleagues to try to get this house sold? And now the seller is going to offer this listing broker a commission and then the listing broker would say guess what buyer's broker you know if you find me a buyer um for this listing i will give you part of this commission that the seller is going to give us so which worked out great for a long time and inevitably what ended up happening so before the mid 90s every realtor was always a sub agent for the seller. They only represented sellers. Um, and in, I think it was 1996 in Ohio, they had now started a buyer's agency. 
So what that huge change was, and I was around for that because I got licensed in 92, hmm. um, and that really shook the industry, to be honest with you. I remember it was a, it was quite the shell-shocking concept to think, wait a second, now we can really represent buyers and and look out for their best interest, negotiate on their behalf. Before that, it was buyer beware. You had to tell a buyer, I don't represent you. You have to figure out this price on your own. I'm telling you it's worth what the asking price is. So it was a huge mental shift for agents. And there was also a huge win for the consumer because now all of a sudden they've got somebody in their camp representing them. So mm -hmm. what we did not change was the commission structure. So we kept the commission structure that the listing agent would, you know, get a listing broker and agent would be paid for listing the house. And then we would share part of that commission with uh, the buyer's agent when they brought the buyers in. Mm -hmm. So what the lawsuit was about is they said that the buyer should know, there's two pieces of this, the buyer should know what the buyer's agent's getting paid. So as a buyer, you hired this buyer's agent to work with you. And that's great that the seller's paying for the services, but the buyers have no clue what that commission is. And the buyers, excuse me, the sellers were upset that like, wait a second, we're paying for this buyer's agent and hmm. there's really not a win in it for us other than we're, we're getting them to bring in this buyer. Um, they think that that commission should between the be between the buyer and the buyer's agent and they should negotiate that commission. And the listing agent commission should be negotiated between the listing company or broker and the seller. So what's really happening is we're unbundling who's getting paid, right? Right. So um, in essence, it's in it's going to be a great thing for a ton of reasons. A few of the big reasons are, I think for the general public, it's going to be a lot clearer now that, right. okay, if I'm going to go hire a realtor to represent me as a buyer, mm -hmm. I'm going to now know what they're going to get paid. I'm going to know what services they're going to provide. I know that um, to sh moving forward, so again, this lawsuit's still pending. It should be approved, but it sh it's still pending. Um, but once it gets approved by the courts, one of the caveats to it is going to be before I'm allowed to go show a house, I have to have a meeting with the buyer and go over everything that I'm going to provide for them as a, as a realtor and show them my fee structure. And mm -hmm. we're going to have to agree to that. So I think it's a wonderful thing, actually. So, <laughs> And the other neat thing that's going to happen for the consumer is buyers are going to now start shopping for sharp buyer's agents. That's um, right. Before, I think, you know, how many times would, mm -hmm. you know, Julie, when you were selling houses, where did you meet a lot of buyers? In an open house. Did they interview you or just decide to work with you because you were nice? Mm, I think it was my my charm and my charisma that just- it was. I, it just was clear that I knew what I was doing because I was a nice, friendly person. And you're intelligent. You have great people <laughs> skills. I mean, it's true. I mean, so so that will still happen. Yeah. And though, that's, what's also going to happen is it's going to be, okay, just like we have a whole listing presentation right. to highlight our strengths as agents, we're going to now have to have one for the buyers, which yeah. I welcome because I know sure. that sharp you know, dedicated, educated agents um, are going to continue to to um, appeal to the public, right? They're, so the general public and buyers are going to be drawn to those agents that mm -hmm. sell a lot of houses. If, you know, you're selling two or three houses a year and now your buyers, your buyers interviewing you and you got to tell them they only sold two buyers last year, that's going to be a problem, right? So I think it's, it's going to be a, a great win for the consumer, because now um, they're going to go into these transactions knowing what's what their realtors expected to do and how they're going to be compensated. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not worried about it. I, I think it's going to be a, a, a good thing. Um, I remember, so of course, what's one of the big questions we get right now about the, now that with this change? Like, <laughs> like you know, I'll... I'll We've had a few, we've had a few, you know, like, how are you going to get paid? Oh my gosh. Are, are you going to lose a ton of money? Are you not going to get paid anymore? What, how are you going to make a living if you don't get paid anymore? And then we're like, wait a minute, we're still getting paid. 
so I think, so That's I remember it, not a May, there is. And so I remember in the mid nineties, so realty one, which was subset was the largest independent broker in Northeastern Ohio. So it the largest broker in, in all of Ohio, actually. And that, which is now, which is part purchased by Howard Hanna. When I was working with them, this is, I'm going to date myself. We had the MLS books, right? Then we ended up having the MLS online, but it was not available to the public. This is before Zillow, Realtor.com, mm -hmm. any of them. Mm -hmm. Realty One decided and spent a ton of money that they were going to put all their listings up on the internet. And they created Realty1.com. And there was agents in an uproar. There was agents that left the brokerage because they're like, oh my gosh, how can we give the public all this information? We used to be the gatekeepers. The only way the public could find out about listings for sale is you had to call realtor and you had to get access to the MLS. So basically what we did is we literally put every listing up, up there uh, into the cyber world so that everybody could see it. A lot of agents were freaking out going, oh my gosh, buyers are never going to call us anymore. They're always going to go directly to the seller for that matter now. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're not going to need us. That was... Uh, 30 years ago, right? Did that happen? No, because mm -hmm. most buyers understand the value that a very educated, strong negotiator, um, you know, intelligent with market values. They, they want somebody that has those characteristics and they're going to continue to, to shop for those people uh, and those agents that can provide that. So, you know, we've seen huge shifts Mm -hmm. And then you look at Zillow, right? So they took that. They went first. Our listings were on each individual's webs, each individual broker's websites. Then it switched to okay, let's go to Realtor.com and that's Homes.com. Mm -hmm. And people are still using buyers agents. So um, I think will the market change as far as how we're getting paid? And and we've not figured those pieces parts out. Will be, you know, will the seller be giving buyers credit? As a, towards their closing costs to pay their commissions. We don't know that yet. Our buyers right. can be ready checks for this. So those those things will kind of unfold naturally. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what my message, I, I really want to let people know is I, I don't see realtors going away. I think that uh, consumers, you know, are still, they understand this is a huge financial obligation and purchase. They want to know what an agent thinks about value. Uh, and future value, um, and they're still going to be using us. So hopefully so, that answers some of the bigger well, questions. Well, I thought that's, I mean, I think, again, I asked you to share because I think, mm -hmm. you know, for us, for me personally, and for our team, it is always a good reminder to go back a little bit into history. I mean, when you understand the history, you can be prepared for your future. And so if we know this industry has changed so much, um, I mean, just since, I don't know, 16 years that I've been in business, it's it's been up and down and around and there's been recessions and there's been um, COVID and there's this scare and there's that scare. And so we can choose, uh, we can choose how we react, right? Yep. We can choose to be afraid. We can choose to be reactive or we could choose what, Ed? To make it happen, right? I mean, if if you know, we, like, we're how are we going to be? Like, what's the what's the best way to move forward as a, a a producing professional real estate agent, real estate expert, right now, where we stand? How how can we continue to move forward with with an uncertain outcome of this situation? So. All you can ever do is can control what you could control, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what we can control is I can control how many people are in my database. So how many people I have that know me, like me, and are going to use me when it comes to, to, to real estate and see me as their real estate expert. Because control... this business is a relationship business. It, it always has been and it always will be, right? So it has to do with how many people that I know. Number one, mm -hmm. right? That I are in my database. Yep. Number two, how do I communicate with them? Mm -hmm. You know, on a, on a regular basis, and whether it's calls and emails and text messages and, and all of that. 
Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, just staying in relationship with them and making the contacts. So that's really all, all it comes down to. It's, it's the same as it was two weeks ago, as it was um, before we started putting all of our listings in, on the internet in 1994, uh, as it was in 1974. Uh, yeah. Again, it's, it's a relationship-based business. It's how many people do you know, uh, showing and providing value mm -hmm. and giving back and um, constantly being training, right? Staying in training. So, you know, actually everything that's going on. Um, so when that consumer does stick their hand up and say, I need some real estate help, you can be a ton of value to them. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to bring that point up too, because um, the days are pretty much over where you can just go get your license, roll out of bed and sell a house. I mean, you do need to know what you're doing. And I think we've always needed to know what we're doing. I think it's just a lot of agents have gotten very comfortable doing the least amount that they need to do, training in the least amount that they need to train. And it, this is a good wake up call for us. I mean, we do, we are in a very highly professional industry uh, and we need to treat it as such. We need to be training. We need to be understanding the markets. Uh, we need to be having the conversation so we can be the experts who are educating, you know, our friends and family and past clients when they're hearing this news, we need to educate them and tell them, you know, what the truth of the matter is, you know, and again, we need to understand what our value even is. I know um, we're taking an excellent course next week called Value Squared that, um, you know, Gary Keller and Jay Papazan are teaching and I'm very excited about it. Uh, and I love having resources and being around people that are like, yeah, let's learn, let's train, let's figure this out and let's get ahead of it so that we can continue to help our clients at the highest level. That's one way of moving forward. Or you can choose to be in the camp of, oh my gosh, this is horrible. This is a mess. This is going to ruin everything. The, uh, first time home buyers are screwed. We're, this is over, you know, and you can, and, and you know what, you can put it all over your Facebook because that's a really good idea, isn't it? Let's cause more fear with our, our sphere and our clients. I mean, let's choose how to react because at the end of the day, like Ed said, and this is what caused me a lot of confidence and peace around this scenario is we can only control one thing. We can control the actions that we take and how we react to it, right? But complaining about it, throwing up fear and worry and anxiety, like that is gonna do nothing for the future of your business. And I'm telling you the people who want to live in that space, okay, so we all had moments of like, ah, <laughs> And let's be honest, it's going to be a lot to figure out for, for a, a little while, right? We're all uh, going to have to work together. We're yeah, all going to have to come up with solutions. But the people who are in that mode and don't snap out of it quickly, those will be the agents that are going to get out of the business. Think about this. It's good. So change equals opportunity. Mm -hmm. there's, there's always going to be change. And the bigger the change, the more opportunity there is. So a few opportunities that just popped up in my head. There's going to be different business models maybe moving forward Yeah. that, that come out of this. There's mm -hmm. going to be, uh, I'm going to say it. And I don't, you don't, I don't know if you're going to want me to say it, but I'm going to say it. There's going to be a lot of agents that get out of the business because of this. this is oh, I be, just said it. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and, that's a, and that's yeah. a great thing, to be honest with you. Because So mm -hmm. here's the stat. Of the 1.4 million realtors last year in the National Association of Realtors, I think it was half sold under two homes. So Whoa, half? That's it insane. Was, I think it was 45. It was, it was huge. Whatever the number was, it was a huge oh number of agents did two or three sales or less last year. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, those folks bring zero value to the general public. They don't know what they're doing. You know, I, I hate to say it that way, but if you sell two houses a year um, and, and you don't attend a ton of training, stay up to date with what's going on with your broker. Um, you know, if you're doing all those rest of the, the things and you sold two houses last year, so right. be it. it was totally a different story, right. Uh -huh. But if you just dabble and do this part-time you, and you're doing 
the industry a disservice and your customers a disservice at the same time. So yeah. um, that's going to be an opportunity that comes out of this in, in my eyes too. So that, and that's just two that just dropped right out of my head. There's going to be a lot more too as this kind of un unfolds. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what makes life fun and interesting, right? If, what if, if everything stayed the same all the time, what fun would that be? Yeah, we'd be so bored. Yeah. And you know, most of us are in this industry because we don't want to be bored. Yeah. <laughs> we want to control our schedule and run our own life and we don't want to work for the man. And right. so the idea is, is that um, this industry is always changing and this isn't a necessarily a bad change. It's just different. Yeah. It's something we're going to have to adjust to. It's something we're going to have to get used to. And I'm going to also say that it's something that we're going to have to work together on. Whether mm -hmm. you're in... X, Y, or Z brokerage, I mean, we're going to need to really come together and partner. And, you know, in if we want to go back into history, I remember in 2008, 2009, 2010, we were all really, really good friends, right? We were partnering, we were working together, we were doing and, what it took to- And what make you mean by partnering, it doesn't mean we're going to- um all get together and change, you know, charge the same commissions or anything like no, that. That's, no, no, not no, no. I mean, commissions like, at all. this is all just about working, working together, together as, right. a, as an industry yes. together and, um, you know, working on the, our best behalf for our consumers yes. and our clients, uh, and you know, just to move the, move the whole industry forward, not be a big stick in the mud. And you sit here and complain about this over and over and over and over again. It's sure. that's not going to get us anywhere. Or do it, you know, I think we just need to to join forces as an industry because at the end of the day, this could be a really positive change that helps professionalize our industry in ways that we've wanted it to for a long time. So it could move us towards that. I know that's always a goal of ours is to change the way real estate sold and to have have an industry that is um, respected and valued and that we're, we're true professionals. And I know it doesn't feel like that right now. And I know it doesn't, it feels like we're being attacked and that we're being told we don't have that value, but that's not the truth. And so we have to continue to, to understand that, believe that. And I know that um, the other one thing that I want to say before we wrap up is that the number, the people that we should be continuously talking to is is our past clients and our referral sources because those are the people who already know us already like us already saw the value that we added hopefully um maybe not um but you know ours, so ours have ours have yes yes but so those are you know really doubling down on staying close to your your database and your past clients and at the end of the day, Ed, I mean, do you think we will take a loss in our commissions? Do you think we should be um, thinking about that or concerned about that? So, uh, the jury's still out. I mean, so this this could, our commissions, you know, could be reduced or they could stay the same. We, we really don't know. You or know, we can I, make I, more. You can make more. I mean, I, it's, it's good. Like I said, it's a lot of interesting things are going to be happening in the next 12 to 24 months as this continues to play out and as agents and brokers start to figure out and get their footing with um, um, the whole, you know, buyers negotiating for their portion of the commission. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it could be, I mean, I, I'm going to budget. Yeah. That it's going to get, you know, it's going to hit our pocketbooks a little bit. I don't know if it even will though. I, I, I you know, me, Julie, I was like, I'm the I'm the budget keeper in our in our. You're very conservative, and but that's wise. It's wise to to. What well, in, in our way. house? I'm our budget keeper, and I always, you know, <laughs> I'm always the one sharpening the, sharpening the pencil. But yeah. we don't know. You know, I, I think it's there's there's there could be some companies that say, hey, I'm going to go out after these buyers. Period. That's all I'm going to do is be a buyer's agent, and I'm going to come up with an interesting an interesting model to go after buyers, and they could kill it. Right. I mean, so I, as, as far as that goes, it provided great value yeah. and great yeah. compensation model. So I don't know. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Well, and two, at the end of the day, um, the listings, there's, we, it's still our focus. Find people who need to sell their home, go after listings, um, continue to pr provide your value that way. And, um, you know, I do believe that we all, 
should, even before this lawsuit news, it was this market is shifting. We need to double down on the basics, like Ed said, to, to get into relationships, to add to your database, to um, to do the, the basics of, of this job, right? And if you don't like the basics of this job, then you might want to find a new job because it's legitimately what this job is, 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 is prospecting, networking, building relationships, database management. Um, and if all those things sound terrible for you, then yeah, it might be a good idea to find a different job. So thank you so much, Ed. I, I really appreciate you sharing um, some of your wisdom and time. And I know you'll be continuing to speak out about this because you are a leader in our industry. And I know you're very passionate about um, professionalizing our industry and helping other agents to to continue on building up their careers. So thank you so much. And thank you, everybody. If, uh, like you. always, if you have any questions, we're here for you. Thank Take you. care. Thanks. Bye-bye.